Hello, I'm Lisa Van Ramdonk with the University of Colorado Denver School of Public Affairs, and I'm here with a short explainer of some of the things that local public health agencies take into consideration when they're determining the kinds of services that they'll provide in their communities. Now, public health agencies in Colorado all take a little bit of a different tack on this. They're not all the same, but there are a few core elements that many of them are considering. You might be surprised to know that there is not a set of comprehensive mandated public health services written into state law. There are some mandatory structures set in state statute. So a public health agency exists of a, consists of a board of health, a public health director, and a medical officer, and then the staff needed to accomplish the services and activities of the public health agency. And public health agencies have some state statute regulatory authority over things like food, water, child care centers, and the management of communicable disease outbreaks. State law gives authority to the Colorado State Board of Health to create a rule that is this more comprehensive Colorado core public health services. And these are the services that local public health agencies should be providing to their community. This rule was updated in 2019 and a national model called the Public Health Foundational Capabilities and Foundational Services was used as the backbone. The core public health services are intended to be broad so that local public health agencies can customize their programming to meet the needs of the community and also to fit into the framework. Public health agencies also think about their organizational capacity, their existing funding, what funding could be available to them and their existing programs as they're determining the kinds of services they'll provide. There is a responsibility to use the community vision, community goals, and especially the community health needs to guide services. State statute requires a community health assessment and a public health improvement plan for each public health agency. And the intention is that these are created through community conversations and in partnership with other organizations in the community. A community might also have some overarching vision or goals related to health. And we definitely know that sometimes community partners come to local public health agencies with a specific need or request. Sometimes even with a funding opportunity, a partner might say, would you like to get this funding together and bring this program to our community? Board of Health members and the elected officials, county commissioners um, give guidance as well as they're hearing from community members and constituents about some of the needs. Public health agencies also try to keep an eye on health service gaps in the community with the idea that they may need to fill them. So for example, in a community that doesn't have a lot of healthcare providers, the public health agency might do more immunizations because that's a service gap in the community. Another area that public health agencies consider is what is the desired public health role and the desired government role. Sometimes this is based on community beliefs about the role of government or the existence of another partner in the community. Um, for example, maybe there's a robust partner organization who's providing some of the services so public health agencies don't need to. And sometimes there are funding opportunities that are tied to very specific programs um, and public health agencies have to determine if that program can meet a need and if it's their role to provide that program. Once public health agencies are thinking about the kinds of programs that they have going on, there are lots of program standards and requirements. And sometimes these come from national or state standards Sometimes they're even written into state statute saying, if you're going to run this kind of program, here's how you need to run it. There are also evidence-based programs, and there's a national clearinghouse that compiles some of the most highly evidence-based programs in public health. Uh, and in addition to these evidence-based programs, there's what we call evidence-informed programs. So these are often more innovative, newer programs that maybe don't have a long-term evaluation, but seem to be promising practices and seem to be working well. So those are also programs that a public health agency might want to engage in. 
Sometimes, again, there are programs that uh, funders have a very specific way of how they need to be run. Nurse Family Partnership is a good example of an evidence-based program with specific ways that the program needs to be run based on the funder and program developers. Then if a public health agency is interested in being accredited through the Public Health Accreditation Board, there's a whole host of requirements for both the agency structure and for the programs and activities of the public health agency. So that might also guide what they're doing. So all of these things combined together make up what the public health agency comes to have as its services and structures. This is not a linear process. Public health agencies are often going through these ways of thinking in an iterative manner, especially when it comes to questions like, is there funding available? Are there service gaps? And is there a community need? And that's just part of the art and science of managing a public health agency, being able to meet those needs and find those funding sources to match up well. So hopefully this has been a helpful uh, explanation of the complexity of how public health agencies often think about developing their work.